Welcome back to Bargaining and More. This lecture is on how issue indivisibility is actually a type of commitment problem. Going back to the last lecture, you'll remember that we were looking at a situation where we had this 0-1 interval, but instead of being able to negotiate anywhere along that interval, we had an indivisible issue, which means that there are only a fixed number of points that we could choose from in trying to reach a negotiated solution. And in this lecture, we're going to be focusing on the extreme case to make things easier, where it's an all or nothing affair. One side has to get everything and the other side gets nothing whatsoever. What we saw previously is that if we have a bargaining range where P plus CB is less than one and P minus CA is greater than zero, then both of them have a positive utility for war. And so the standard bargaining range, the set of agreements that both of us would prefer to fighting, we can't get into it because of the indivisibility of the good. And because both of us have a positive utility for fighting, if we assign all of the good to one party, the other party would prefer to fight a war instead. And so as a consequence, we get war. And war is bad, and that's unfortunate. But remember, we're trying to figure out how this thing is actually a commitment problem, why issue and divisibilities are causing a commitment problem. And you'll recall that a commitment problem has two components, one of which is inefficiency. So on inefficiency. That is, there is an alternative outcome that leaves both parties better off or one party better off and the other party no worse off than what actually occurs in equilibrium. And the other component is commitment failure. That to be able to reach the more efficient outcome would require someone to commit to a strategy that they don't actually have the ability to credibly commit to in the future, hence the problem. Okay, so in order to cast this as a commitment problem, we first need to understand the inefficiency and second need to understand where the commitment failure is coming in. So for inefficiency, let's think about what the outcome of this game is. If we're having a war being fought as a consequence of the indivisible good, then both of our payoffs are going to be our war payoffs. So A's utility is its war payoff, which is P minus CA. That's what it's actually going to get when it plays. And B's payoff is its war payoff, which is one minus P minus CB. So these are the utilities that the parties are receiving when they actually play the game. Now we need to think about what is inefficient about this and how we could come up with some alternative conflict resolution system that might make both of them better off and see how that actually fails to work in practice. So for this diagram that I created right here, and for the sake, again, of illustration to make things easier, this is about one half. Let's just actually say it is equal to one half, that the probability of victory here is one half. Imagine instead of having a war be fought to determine who is going to keep the entire good, let's have a coin flip instead. And on heads, A takes everything. And on tails, B takes it. So the agreement that we're looking at instead of fighting a war is that we will flip a coin. If the coin comes up heads, then A will take the entire good. And if the coin comes up tails, B will take the entire good. This works with the coin flip because P is exactly equal to one half. If P were something between zero and one half or greater than one half, but less than one, then we wouldn't be flipping a coin. We would have to have some sort of other weighted uh, randomization device instead. But you'll get the idea with just thinking about this as a coin flip. It'll make it a little bit easier and conceptually simpler if we think of it just as P equal to one half for the special case. And you can generalize it in your head on your own. All right, imagine that we enjoy this coin flip. We watch it flying through the air and we see that it lands on heads. Well, it's gonna happen half the time and it's gonna land on tails the other half of the time. So if we're thinking about what our utilities are here, our utilities for the coin flip, coin flip payoff. Well, half the time, if we follow the instructions of this tacit agreement, half the time A is going to get everything and the other half of the time, it's going to get nothing. So its payoff is equal to one half, which again is equal to P. And you can see going up to here that this payoff for P is better than fighting a war because it is getting what it expects to get by fighting a war. 
but it is not having to pay the cost associated with fighting. So A is better off as a consequence. We think about B's payoff, well, it's going to be the same sort of idea. B's payoff for this coin flip is going to be, well, now this half of the time B is losing on heads, so it's getting nothing. The other half of the time B is winning on tails, and so its payoff is equal to one half, which is equal to one minus P, which is greater than its war payoff of one minus P minus C B coming from up here right there. So we see that B again is better off and it's the same sort of logic as what was going on with A where B is getting what it expects to get through war but it's not having to pay the cost associated with it so it's better off. So we have in fact our inefficiency condition met. This is good. Check that one off. We have an outcome where in equilibrium they're both getting P and 1 minus P in expectation but they're also paying costs and so if we just distribute that P and 1 minus P through a cost-free mechanism, namely the coin flip, both parties would be better off. But let's think about why this won't actually work out. That will get us the second part, the commitment failure, which will then total up the commitment problem altogether. Imagine you're A. Half the time you win, and you're very happy because you get the entire good. So you would want to abide by the results of the coin flip the half the time that you win. But think about the one half of the time that you lose. If you follow the coin flips rule, then you are supposed to give the entire good over to the other side. If you do that, then your payoff is zero. However, we live in a world of anarchy. You don't have to abide by the result of the coin flip if you don't want to. You could instead say, fight a war. And if you fight a war after following up the loss on the coin flip, instead of getting zero, you get P minus CA, and that value is greater than zero. So as a consequence of having a positive war payoff, A is unwilling to abide by the result of the coin flip. It cannot credibly commit to abide by the deal. Same thing with B down here, where if B is losing this half the time on heads, it's supposed to get a payoff of zero right there, but it could instead fight at that point and receive one minus P minus CB and that is a larger payoff for it than receiving that zero is. So neither side is willing to credibly commit to the result of the coin flip. If either side loses, the losing side chooses to fight instead, and hence we have commitment failure. So we now see that issue indivisibility is a type of commitment problem because it results in an inefficient outcome. There is an alternative dispute mechanism that will resolve the problem without having to incur that inefficiency, but we can't credibly commit these parties to abiding by the result of that coin flip. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Take care.